After her breathtaking audition on Britain's Got Talent in 2009, Susan Boyle soared to international stardom. But the question is, what has Susan been doing since becoming a household name? With a staggering fortune exceeding $45 million, more than she could possibly spend, is there any inclination for her to reclaim the spotlight? Surprisingly, details about Susan Boyle's current endeavors have been conspicuously scarce. What's happened to Susan Boyle? Let's delve into the real reason we don't hear about Susan Boyle anymore. Susan Boyle struggled with the loss of her sister, father, and mother. Susan's journey to stardom is intricately woven with the threads of her family's influence on her singing career. Hailing from Irish immigrants, her mother and father played pivotal roles in shaping Susan's passion for music. Despite her father's occupation in the mines, it became evident that her musical talents were inherited, as he too was a skilled singer, almost making a mark in the professional realm. The impact of his passing was profound, leaving Susan understandably distraught. Tragically, the blows continued as one of her sisters succumbed to a preventable asthma attack shortly after, compounding the grief. These consecutive losses prompted Susan to channel her emotions into her music, realizing the brevity of life. Her mother, a steadfast source of encouragement for her singing endeavors, played a crucial role in Susan's decision to audition for a talent show before Britain's Got Talent. Despite the emotional turmoil, she bravely took the stage, only to face the challenges posed by the show's presenter, Michael Barrymore, who attempted to distract her during a rare, unaired footage. The devastating turn of events continued with the loss of her mother, leaving Susan profoundly affected. The deafening silence that followed this tragedy silenced Susan's singing voice for nearly two years. The weight of these losses, coupled with the hiatus from singing, reflects the complexity of Susan's emotional journey. Susan Boyle's older sister died from cancer. The tapestry of Susan Boyle's life continues to be woven with poignant threads of family tragedy and challenges, even after attaining fame. Following her rise to stardom, another heart-wrenching loss struck when her sister Birdie unexpectedly succumbed to cancer. Birdie held a special place in Subo's heart, acting as a grounding force and a voice of reason. Her untimely death dealt a significant blow to Susan, impacting her emotionally and leading to the postponement of an album she had been diligently working on. Beyond the realm of bereavement, Susan's newfound celebrity status introduced additional complexities through family dynamics, one stark example unfolded when her brother purportedly issued a distressing ultimatum, threatening self-harm if Susan didn't provide him with 50,000 pounds. This revelation triggered intense family disputes and strife, prompting Susan to sever ties with her brother, disowning him, and maintaining a prolonged period of silence. These intricate family issues have undeniably left an indelible mark on Susan's career trajectory, steering her towards a preference for a more subdued public profile. Mental health problems, Susan Boyle's journey to international acclaim is marked by a history of challenges, beginning with a misdiagnosis that had a profound impact on her early life. Deprived of oxygen during birth, state doctors labeled her as partially brain-damaged, a label that unfairly burdened her for much of her life. This misdiagnosis fueled a hostile environment during her school years, where she endured constant bullying and mockery, ostensibly for being perceived as slow. Consequently, she left school with few qualifications, all under the cloud of an inaccurate judgment. The turning point in Susan's understanding of her own condition came after her groundbreaking appearance on Britain's Got Talent. It was only then that she was correctly diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a form of autism known for impairing social skills. This revelation offered profound insights into Susan's character, shedding light on her extremely shy nature and the performance anxiety she grapples with regularly. The delayed diagnosis, while bringing clarity, also underscored the unfortunate reality 
that Susan could have benefited from earlier recognition of her condition. Contrary to the misconceptions arising from her misdiagnosis, Susan's cognitive abilities proved to be above average, with an impressive IQ. However, the challenges presented by Asperger's syndrome manifested in her struggles with navigating new social situations and coping with stress. These difficulties came to the forefront after her experience on Britain's Got Talent, particularly following her emotional breakdown in a hotel post the final. This incident prompted the show's producers to involve the police, leading to Susan's detention under the Mental Health Act and subsequent admission to a private clinic for much-needed rest and recuperation. The aftermath of this incident extended beyond the realm of reality television, drawing attention from the highest echelons of the British government. The British Prime Minister at the time expressed concerns over Susan's mental well-being, sparking a broader discourse about the psychological toll of such competitions on contestants. The questions raised prompted contemplation on whether participants should undergo psychological evaluations before progressing to subsequent stages of intense shows like Britain's Got Talent. Susan Boyle's journey with Asperger's syndrome, while bringing a measure of clarity, remains a nuanced exploration of mental health challenges. Armed with the knowledge of her condition, Susan has found ways to navigate situations with greater understanding and resilience. However, the road to emotional well-being is not without its twists, and Susan's life continues to unfold with episodes that lay bare the ongoing impact of Asperger's. One such incident unfolded at an airport, where Susan experienced a breakdown, culminating in her detainment and subsequent hospitalization. These occurrences underscore the ongoing complexities that individuals with Asperger's face, even with heightened self-awareness. Susan candidly acknowledges that her health struggles have curtailed live performances, citing a direct connection to her Asperger's syndrome. The toll on her well-being, both physically and mentally, has been significant, prompting periods of withdrawal from the public eye. The media's role in shaping the narrative around Susan's challenges has further complicated her journey. Public scrutiny and what Susan describes as the media's public assassination have cast a shadow over her experiences. For a woman grappling with anxiety and social disorders, compounded by a lifetime spent in a small village, the intense scrutiny and coverage must have been particularly daunting. The media's portrayal of her struggles adds an extra layer of complexity to Susan's narrative, creating an environment where the external pressure becomes almost overwhelming. In response to this intense spotlight, Susan has made the conscious choice to reduce her workload. This decision, driven by a need for self-preservation, amplifies the significance of her achievements. Despite facing formidable hurdles, Susan Boyla's ability to persist and succeed becomes even more remarkable in the context of her ongoing battle with mental health challenges. Susan Boyle got her first real boyfriend at the age of 53. Love has a way of surprising us at any age, and Susan Boyle's romantic journey is a testament to that adage. At the age of 53, she embarked on her first real romantic relationship, disproving the notion that love has an age limit. While Boyle had a brief encounter with romance in her 20s, it was a chapter that closed almost as soon as it began. In her earlier attempt at love, Boyle's father played the role of a discerning guardian, deeming her not quite ready for the complexities of a relationship. Though the decision was undoubtedly disappointing at the time, Boyle now reflects on it with understanding, acknowledging that maturity was a factor. Fast forward to 2014, and Susan Boyle found herself entangled in the possibility of love once again. This time, it was with an American doctor who, by all accounts, was the epitome of a perfect gentleman. The hopes and well wishes of many accompanied Boyle on this romantic journey. However, despite the optimism, the relationship didn't culminate in a lasting connection. Boyle, in her characteristic honesty, admitted that practical considerations led to the decision to part ways. Susan Boyle wanted to adopt a child. Susan Boyle hails from a sizable Roman Catholic family, holding the title of the youngest among her nine siblings. 
one can only picture the bustling scene of siblings vying for the bathroom in the morning before heading off to school. Life in their household must have been quite a lively affair. Given this background, it's no wonder that the rumors circulating about Boyle wanting to create her own family hold true, and in a unique and heartwarming twist, she envisions doing so through adoption. Expressing her heartfelt aspirations, Boyle shared with the Scottish Sunday Mail, I want to adopt a child who doesn't have much, who I can really give something to. Despite stating that she cannot have children of her own, Boyle is driven by a surplus of love she wishes to share, embodying a genuine desire to give back. Her noble intention is rooted in the hope of providing a child with the care and support she may have missed during her own upbringing. I want to give a youngster what I didn't have, she emphasized. Acknowledging the potential obstacles on the path to adoption, Boyle remains undeterred. Her intentions, sincere and pure, shine through as she navigates the complexities of the adoption process. Looking ahead, Boyle recognizes that the approval of social services is a crucial step. She openly shares, We'll have to see what social services say, but it would make me so happy. Susan Boyle still lives in her family's modest home, out of the public eye. In spite of Susan Boyle's considerable wealth, luxury cars and grand mansions aren't on her wish list. Instead, Boyle has made the heartwarming choice to stay put in her family home, sharing the space with her feline companion. If there's anything more wholesome in this world, it has yet to come to our attention. And just when you think it couldn't get any better, it does. In 2015, Boyle made a decision to expand her property holdings, and it wasn't in the typical celebrity fashion. Rather than opting for extravagant purchases, she chose to acquire the property next door, with the delightful plan of merging the two plots to create her dream home. We'd bet that her cat enjoys the sunniest spot in the house, while the singer briefly owned a villa valued at nearly $400,000 Affectionately nicknamed the Posh House by her friends, she found more solace in her childhood home. Susan Boyle has a tough time off stage. Susan Boyle shines brilliantly on stage. Who could forget the way she confidently responded to Simon Cowell's eye roll? A true legend in her own right. However, despite her poised presence in the spotlight, Boyle finds it challenging to maintain composure when she's off stage, navigating the nuances of life with Asperger's syndrome. In an interview with the Daily Mail, she openly admitted, Off stage, my bad behavior happens lots. There are times when it gets so intense that she humorously labels herself as the only artist who needs a leash and playfully describes herself as King Kong's mother. It seems she can be quite the handful. Thankfully, Boyle is actively working on managing her emotions better. I'm getting better at dealing with it because I know what it is, she shared. Since the diagnosis, I've learned strategies for coping with it, and the best one is always to just walk away. It's a piece of wisdom that resonates with us all at different times in life. Susan Boyle has lost weight for her health. Like many individuals today, Susan Boyle has faced her share of struggles with weight and health. The turning point came in 2014 when her doctors delivered a new diagnosis, type 2 diabetes. This news meant Boyle had to take her wellness seriously, even if it meant making some challenging lifestyle changes. I needed to stop eating sweeties and cakes, she candidly admitted to the magazine. It's a sentiment many can relate to, as resisting tempting treats can be a real challenge. Rather than avoiding the issue, Boyle embraced the guidance of her medical professionals and committed to the hard work required to enhance her health. The result? A remarkable weight loss of nearly 30 pounds, undoubtedly a positive development that pleased her doctors. Boyle even humorously mentioned contemplating sending a picture of her slimmer figure to her former American beau if he's a good boy. Such dedication to health and a touch of humor make Susan Boyle all the more endearing. Understandably, 
With her well-being and potentially her life at stake, Susan prioritized her health journey over her singing career, temporarily allowing it to take a back seat. Susan Boyle's working to stay relevant. Susan Boyle's remarkable vocal talent has continued to resonate through the years, and she has consistently showcased her perfect pipes in various musical endeavors. Her seventh album, titled A Wonderful World, stands as a testament to her enduring artistry, released in 2016 to the delight of her fans. This musical compilation features a diverse range of tunes, including beloved classics like When You Wish Upon a Star. What makes the album truly special are the two remarkable duets Susan engaged in. The first involved a collaboration with singer-songwriter Michael Bolton, reinterpreting the timeless melody Somewhere Out There in a contemporary fashion. The second, perhaps even more extraordinary, was a duet with the legendary Nat King Cole, where Susan joined her vocals with his on the classic When I Fall in Love. This unique collaboration with Nat King Cole's iconic voice marked a historic moment for Susan Boyle, and she expressed her deep honor in a press statement, noting that being the first British artist to perform a duet with Cole's vocals was a genuine privilege. Not limiting herself to the classics, Susan also ventured into covering songs by contemporary favorites, including a rendition of Madonna's Like a Prayer. A self-proclaimed huge Madonna fan, Susan described performing this song as a real highlight, adding a touch of versatility to her musical repertoire. In 2019, Susan Boyle continued her musical journey with the release of her album Ten, celebrating the 10th anniversary of her debut album I Dreamed a Dream. This special compilation not only included previously released music, but also introduced a few new songs allowing fans to once again revel in the timeless voice of Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle hired a tutor to learn how to play the piano. Despite Susan Boyle being widely recognized for her breathtaking mezzo-soprano voice, she decided to embark on a musical journey of diversification in 2012. Opting for a change, she delved into piano lessons. Interestingly, she didn't enlist the services of a renowned pianist to the stars or import a maestro from afar. Instead, she chose a local piano tutor in her hometown of Blackburn, West Lothian, and dedicated herself to practice. The culmination of her piano endeavors took center stage at a 2014 show in Leicester. On her 53rd birthday, Susan showcased her newly acquired piano skills, skillfully playing the keys while performing her cherished song, Who I Was Born to Be. The audience was treated to this special moment, and according to her spokesperson, the reception from her fans was nothing short of incredible. Witnessing Susan Boyle unfold this new chapter in her musical repertoire was undoubtedly a dream come true for both her and her admirers. No need to work anymore. Just how successful is Susan Boyle's musical career? Well, her debut album, I Dreamed a Dream, named after the iconic song that catapulted her to fame, secured the top spot on the Billboard charts in 2009. It didn't stop there. The album also claimed the title of the most popular album worldwide that year, amassing an impressive 8 million sales. Bravo, Subo. Following up in 2010, Boyle released her second album, The Gift, which raked in nearly $4 million in sales and achieved platinum status, according to The Guardian. Making a mark in both the UK and the US simultaneously, this accomplishment mirrored the success of her debut album in the same year. This feat is noteworthy, as only the Beatles and the Monkees had achieved it before her making Susan Boyle the first woman to accomplish such a milestone. Talk about breaking barriers. Her musical journey didn't end there, with numerous albums continuing to follow. Collectively, Susan Boyle's estimated net worth stands at around $33 million, a testament to her undeniable success. It's safe to say she has earned the right to step back and not worry about working for money again, considering where she began. Susan Boyle still fears one day not being able to pay her bills.
Despite Susan Boyle's monumental success, she remains grounded and hasn't forgotten the challenging times she faced. Reflecting on her past struggles, she shared, I've been there, sitting in the dark, unable to pay the bills after my mother died and before I went on Britain's Got Talent, as revealed in an interview with the Sunday Post. It's a fear she vividly remembers and understandably wants to avoid. These memories of financial hardship serve as a constant reminder for Boyle, influencing her to maintain a modest lifestyle and spend judiciously. My goals are simple now, she explained, to have good friends and family around me and enjoy some of the money I have earned within reason and ensure I never have to worry about paying my gas and electric again. Clearly, Susan Boyle has a sensible approach to her success, and it seems she won't need to stress about keeping the lights on ever again. Susan Boyle wants to live up to her fans' expectations. Unlike some celebrities who may not give much thought to their fans' expectations, Susan Boyle is deeply committed to her fan base and genuinely cares about what they think, even during periods when she keeps a low profile. In an interview with the Daily Mail, she openly shared her concerns, stating, like any artist, I worry about people still liking me. I worry about going stale. Moreover, Boyle acknowledges the role she plays, recognizing that people have certain expectations of her. She expressed, they see me as a pillar of society, and I don't want to let them down. The weight of those expectations is undoubtedly substantial. While Boyle humorously envisions herself sitting in a rocking chair with a coal fire and a cat in the coming years, a relatable Bisker Goals moment, she has no intention of stepping away from singing, firmly declaring, In my book, retirement is a dirty word. She reassures fans that they have nothing to fear. It's evident that we haven't heard the last from this remarkable mezzo-soprano. Susan Boyle is behind the scenes. Despite Susan Boyle's radiant stage presence as the star she is, her behind-the-scenes life is bustling with responsibilities. It's revealed that Boyle is not just managing one or two, but three companies handling her millions. Juggling the intricacies of running such a financial empire is undoubtedly a significant commitment, showcasing the multifaceted nature of her role. Who runs the world? Girls. In 2011, Boyle, alongside her trusted manager Andy Stevens, assumed control of her brand. Initially, her niece, Kirsty Foy, along with Ossie Kilkenny, the celebrity accountant credited with turning the Irish rock band U2 into formidable wealthy figures, was overseeing the companies. However, this arrangement came to an end when Boyle took charge, steering her own destiny and finances. Witnessing a woman assert control over her financial matters is always empowering. Susan Boyle made a noteworthy comeback on America's Got Talent, The Champions. After years of staying out of the limelight, it was revealed in September 2018 that Boyle would be gracing the stage once again. This marked her reunion with Simon Cowell, known for his straightforward judgments, but in Susan's case, he seemed genuinely pleased. A source shared, Simon was delighted Susan agreed to come back. Alongside Cowell, Howie Mandel, Heidi Klum, and Mel B. served as judges for the competition. Boyle's journey on the show was indeed impressive, advancing to the final rounds. Unfortunately, she fell short of being crowned the champion, as reported by The Independent. The ultimate winner turned out to be magician Shin Lim, who had also triumphed in the regular version of the show just six months earlier. Nevertheless, Boyle and her supporters at Camp Subo have much to celebrate, considering she outperformed the majority of the other 49 competitors. Securing such an accomplishment is undoubtedly a significant honor. Susan Boyle pulled out of Britain's Got Talent, The Champions. Following her notable stint on America's Got Talent, The Champions, Susan Boyle was set to take the stage once again on Britain's Got Talent, The Champions back in the UK. However, in the late summer of 2019, Boyle made the announcement that she had to withdraw from the competition due to time constraints. In an interview with The Lorraine Show, she explained, I couldn't fit everything in just scheduling. I would have done it, but it's just the way things were. 
Given Boyle's busy schedule and multiple commitments, the decision was understandable. While fans may have felt a tinge of disappointment about her absence on the 2019 stage, Simon Cowell, one of the judges, expressed a different perspective. Speaking on The Lorraine Show, he commented, I don't think she should have done it this year. She did AGT Champions, and if this does well, we'll do it again next year, and it will be an annual event. So you've got to save something. Cowell's words hint at the promise of more Susan Boyle appearances in the future. She suffered a stroke in 2022. Following Susan Boyle's captivating performance on Britain's Got Talent in the summer of 2023, her devoted fans learned the reason behind her prolonged absence from the public eye. Boyle revealed, It's actually special for me because last April I suffered a minor stroke. I fought like crazy to get back on stage, and I have done it. This significant piece of news might have gone unnoticed if you weren't paying close attention to Boyle's words. The extent to which people were aware of Boyle's health struggles remains unclear, as this revelation marked the first public acknowledgement of the ordeal. During the episode, Simon Cowell, evidently privy to Boyle's challenges, expressed, Susan, we owe you so much, and I knew you weren't well, but if anyone was going to come back, you were going to come back. We wouldn't be the same without you. You are amazing. Boyle later took to her Facebook page to elaborate on the impact of the stroke on her speech and singing voice. For the past year, I have worked so hard to get my speech and singing back, she wrote, with the sole aim of being able to sing on stage again, and tonight, my hard work and perseverance paid off, singing the song that started it all, I Dreamed a Dream. The revelation shed light on Boyle's resilience and determination to reclaim her place in the spotlight despite the challenges she faced. Susan Boyle made a heartwarming return to Britain's Got Talent. Susan Boyle's announcement of her stroke and recovery on Britain's Got Talent served not only as a personal revelation, but also as a heartfelt tribute to the show that catapulted her to stardom. Making a poignant return during the season 16 finale in 2023, Boyle chose to perform I Dreamed a Dream from Les Miserables, the same song that marked her memorable audition on season three of Britain's Got Talent. The significance of this choice is profound. Simon Cowell, a judge and the show's creator, reflected on Boyle's impact, stating, She came on this show, and everything changed because up until that point, you know, there was a perception that you had to look this way or be this age. And she just changed the rule book, full stop. Boyle's return allowed her to revisit the transformative song that played a pivotal role in reshaping the entertainment industry's standards. Adding to the emotional resonance, Boyle had the opportunity to perform I Dreamed a Dream alongside Lucy Jones from the 2021 West End production of Les Miserables in London. This collaboration underscored the enduring power of Boyle's voice and her continued connection to the world of musical theater. Boyle's journey from her groundbreaking audition to the season 16 finale exemplifies an extraordinary few years. While her fame may not command the same constant attention as during her initial Britain's Got Talent days, the unwavering support from her fans remains evident. As of June 2023, Boyle had achieved remarkable success, with over 20 million albums sold. Susan Boyle's Remarkable Journey from the transformative audition on Britain's Got Talent to her triumphant return on the season 16 finale stands as a testament to the enduring power of her voice and the indelible mark she has left on the world of entertainment. What is your favorite Susan Boyle moment and how has her story inspired you? Leave your comments below to share your thoughts. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this journey through the life of a true musical icon. And subscribe to our channel if you've still not yet. Until next time, bye.